You know, Santa's still watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking about next year. Good morning, everybody. Let's hear it for the band. No. Well, the Lord be with you. What a beautiful day to be alive here in Highlands or anywhere. I want to thank uh, all our folks that are watching us this morning up there uh, at, uh, on Facebook. Uh, welcome to you also. And, you know, yesterday was the day that we celebrated a very, very important birthday. That is the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's sing happy birthday to Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Well, so welcome to the 909. All the late covers, yes, you can sit down. We see a lot of lot of uh, new faces out there this morning, so I guess we must have a lot of people that are visiting in, out of town. So we'll get to that in a minute, but let's uh, stand as we uh, sing Joy to the World and go tell it on the mountain. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us Let every heart prepare him room 
and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reign. Let men their songs employ, while fields and flood, rocks, hills and plain repeat the sound in joy. Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat, repeat the sound in joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and one wonders of his love. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let the heart repair him. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Keep your toe, Chapman. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching over oh, silent flocks at night, we hope you. Come to this time. Uh, I looked up on the map the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact. And if you look and see where Galilee, Nazareth is up here, and Bethlehem is down here, it's approximately a 200 mile trip. So you can just imagine a young woman being eight to nine months pregnant, making a 200 mile trip. They didn't get in their car, they didn't plug in their navigator. No, they got on the back of donkeys and camels, and they went in a big pack. Because they all had to go back to Beth, uh, Bethlehem to register for the census. So it, uh, if you look at it, it, it's quite a journey, quite arduous. So thank God they did that. So now it's time to share our concerns at the cross. If you have a need or know somebody has a need that you would like to pray for, just bring it up here, put it on the cross. And the uh, staff will pray over it, and then they will burn them. And there we go, up to God. So bring it to the cross.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can bring our needs, our wants to the cross, to you. And we lift you each person here, God. We lift you all the names on this cross. We thank you for your presence, for your healing hands. We ask God that you give to those who have needs, especially this time of year, as the weather turns cold, to those that are cold, that are searching for food, for clothing, for shelter. Help those that need it, need it especially most, is of keeping themselves warm as this winter turns colder, even here in Highlands, eventually. So there will be a great need, God, we know, that uh, to help all the folks that are struggling. So let's be with them, be with us. And especially, God, we thank you for the birth of your son Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer, as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we give those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to that part of our service this morning where we talk about the joys. And so we have birthdays up there on the uh, screen in, a, in addition to the baby Jesus. We have Steve Bedlow, Donnie Edwards, Beth ba Bowser, Valerie Long, Cynthia Berg, Samantha Moore, Ellie Bolt, and Ginny Edwards. Any of you people here this morning? They all must be out partying. Okay. Then we have some anniversaries. Jason and Samantha Moore, Greg and Susan Clarkson. Hey, Greg. Uh, Dennis and Nancy Ostema, Tim and Ginger Mosley. I see them sitting back here somewhere. Nope. Okay. Well, <clears throat> do we have any other joys? Like I said, I see a lot of uh, people out there today, new folks. Here we come with a, with a mic right behind you. Lots of family. I have the pleasure of introducing you guys to the greatest blessing God has ever given me, my daughter Kristen, my grandson Matthew, granddaughter Katie, and my grandson Tyler are visiting with me today, and I'm one happy girl. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Anybody else, family, coming in, visits? No? Well... They all must have missed their airline flight or else it was canceled. What do you think, huh? So, hey, Ken, Ken, yes, in the back of the room, can I just offer up a couple of quick joys? So we've got Robert Doe sitting up here at the front. We've got John Crow sitting in the back. We've prayed for both of these folks recently with uh, significant surgeries, and they are both here with us today. Just want to lift that up as a joy this go. morning. Let's have a hand for them. Please. God blessings to you, both of you. So Now it's uh, time to... Uh, giving and take up the offering is you know that there's there's various ways to uh, to do this you can do it here in person you can do it through the US mail by mailing your checks into the uh, uh, church office and then there's the online section where you can just go pull up HighlandsUnitedMethodist.org and you will come up with a page there and it, do an online giving you can do it once or you set up a continuous repetitive giving every week every month or however you would like to do it. So at this time, let's, let's take the offering.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you what you have so freely given to us. And we use these gifts, God, uh, to further your word, to help this church, to help people that have need through the pastor's fund. For the many blessings you've given to us, that we can use this money to wisely and to continue to move the word throughout Highlands and North Carolina and across the world through all the ministries that we have supported. We thank you again, God, for the many blessings and the abundance. In the name of your son Christ, amen. Now, let's all stand and put your hand in the hand. So put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calms the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Every time I look into the holy book, I want to tremble. And I read about the pond where the carpenter cleared the temple. For the buyers and the sellers were no different than the fellas who and I profess to be. And it causes me shame to know I'm not the man that I should be. So put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calls the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. And I'm, 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 I'm close to heaven. Daddy lived his life with two kids and a wife and he did what he could do. And it showed me enough of what it takes to get you through. So put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calls the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. By putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. This morning's scripture comes from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell on you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Ken. So I find that as we uh, gather today, still with the echo of Christmas Day in our minds and still in the room, still in these early hours of the 12 days of Christmas upon which we have embarked, December 25th through January the 5th, the season of Christmas for the church, 
before the church celebrates the Epiphany of the Lord on uh, December the 6th, I find that these words from Colossians just kind of lay gently on my heart. The writer of uh, Colossians, Paul, or, or somebody writing in his name, offers us, I think, some of the most poetic and beautiful words that we find in all of the Bible, inviting us to be clothed with, listen again, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. What a Christmas gift we would be to the world, right? If we were to wear all of these Christian virtues, if they would guide our past throughout these days and the weeks and the years to come. I love, I love the words that Charles Dickens puts in the mouth of Ebenezer Scrooge's nephew, Fred. Remember? Uh, before Scrooge has met with, uh, Ev with uh, Jacob Marley and the ghost of Christmas's uh, past, present, and future, and Uncle Scrooge is telling Fred why he shouldn't worry about Christmas because it's never put a, a scrap of gold in his pocket. Remember that? Remember what Fred says? Here's what, here's what nephew Fred says. I've always thought of Christmas time when it has come around, apart from the veneration due to its sacred name and origin, if anything belonging to it can be apart from that, as a good time, a kind, forgiving charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely and to think of people below them as if they were really fellow passengers to the grave and not another race of creatures bound on other journeys. And therefore, uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will, me do, will do me good and I say God bless it. I thought of Fred's poetic uh, reply to Scrooge uh, before the visitations of the ghost. As I thought about these words from Colossians, as I looked this week thinking about this text, Kathy told me about a movie the other night she wanted me to watch. She had seen it on TCM, Turner Classic uh, Movies. It was a movie directed by Don Siegel in 1945. It was just a little short, about 21 minutes long. It was entitled Star in the night. I would invite you to Google it, see if you can find it on YouTube. We finally did. It's a creative adaptation inspired by the birth of Jesus. It's set in the West. Three cowboys are riding and they see this bright light and they're guided by this bright light. We learn as the movie progresses that it's actually a big star that an innkeeper had bought and put on his end to bring more business in and they finally get there. And the innkeeper that we meet in the star in the night is grumpy He's tired, it's Christmas Eve, his guests in the inn are grumpy, they're demanding. One guest is mad because people are singing Christmas carols in the room next to them. Another guest is angry because his shirts came back from the laundry and they were damaged. And so everybody's just kind of at everybody's throat, it's Christmas Eve. And you know, sometimes you can get to Christmas Eve after a really busy time of getting ready for Christmas and... You know, you can just be frustrated and angry. I know this has never happened to any of you. When all the perfect Christmas gatherings just weren't being as perfect as you wanted them to be. But that's the scene that we have in this movie. And this young couple comes up in this old jalopy and we learn that the young woman is pregnant and but there's no place in the inn, as you might imagine. But the innkeeper's wife, who was really quite sweet throughout the entire movie, she reminds the innkeeper there is a little shed in the back. So they go in the shed in the back. And, and then the women folk get really excited because they learn there is a, a, a baby about to be born. Uh, and so the men sort of take care of the, the dad, Jose, and the, the, the women take care of the wife, Maria. And then all of a sudden, all of these grumpy people who were part of the inn weren't so grumpy anymore. They started rushing around trying to see what they could do to, to help out. The, uh, the, the man who was so concerned about his, his laundry getting messed up went, and when they were looking for bandages, they were out of bandages. So he went and he took his, took his fancy white shirts and he ripped them up so they could use them as bandages. And everybody was just, their whole demeanor, everything had changed. And there had been a, a weary traveler who had come in and the innkeeper wouldn't give him coffee because he didn't have money. And and, and as the movie goes on, the, you can see the innkeeper's heart begin to change, and he goes and gives the man coffee, and, 
And by the time at the end of the little 21-minute movie, The Star in the Night, the innkeeper finds himself looking at a calendar with a picture of the nativity, and he all of a sudden connects the dots that they had experienced something holy in that night. The birth of the child had changed everything. And the movie ends with a tear in the innkeeper's eye. And, and when it faded to black, Kathy and I both were in a wreck. Just, you know how that is, right? Kathy cries freely. I fight it. <laughs> but I was a mess. I thought of that. I thought of that little movie. When I think about this, this text, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. These are the virtues made possible in us because of Christmas. Because Jesus is born. The birth of Jesus is a game changer in the world. It's a game changer in us. The birth of Jesus brings the power of God on earth to change human beings, to change us. Because of Christmas, we can discover that like the Grinch of Whoville, our hearts can grow three sizes. We can love better, we can love more, we can love people who are like us, we can love people who are not like us. Because of Jesus, the Word made flesh to live among us. Our wardrobe has expanded. It includes things like compassion and kindness and humility and meekness and patience. Because of Christ, we can bear one another. And if you haven't noticed, we're not always so easy to bear. We can forgive one another. Because we know that just like us, on our best days, we're a white hot mess. And we're going to get it wrong as many times as we get it right. These are the attributes, the Christian virtues that describe the church when she really is faithful to being the church. This is who we are when we are perpetual witnesses for the good news that Christmas brings. In our Christmas Eve 5 o'clock service in the sanctuary, we reflected on the fact that we're all called to be little Christs in the world. That's what it means to be Christian. We're all called to give an ongoing testimony of Christmas. We're all called to continue to allow the Word to be enfleshed in us as the Spirit birthed, Spirit empowered, and sent forth church. The Spirit of Christ resides in us. And whenever we live for others more than we live for ourselves, whenever we seek to be agents of hospitality and healing, whenever we work for justice, whenever we insist on human dignity for all people created in the image of God and for whom Christ died, then we bear witness to the message of Christmas. In Christmas, God became human at the birth of Emmanuel, God. With us, the Word was made flesh to live among us. And through the body of Christ, God's faithful church, the Word continues to be made flesh in us. When we serve as light and leaven in the world, the Spirit of Christ resides in us. Let me point you to a simple little part of our reading this morning that is easy to miss. Paul invites his readers to clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness and humility and meekness and patience as God's chosen and holy ones. Did you hear that? Clothe yourselves. These holy garments have been laid out on the bed for us each morning, but we can choose to wear something else. These clothes aren't imposed upon us. We're not forced to wear them. We can wear things like garments of anger and hatred. We can wear prejudice and hostility. We can choose to speak ill of others. We can use our words carelessly and cruelly. We can still choose to weaponize the words of the Bible. We have free will. Nobody makes us wear these attributes. Like Adam and Eve in the garden, 
We can always choose to eat from the tree in the middle of the garden that will get us in trouble. But that, of course, is not who we're called to be. Listen again to our call as followers of Christ. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you, almost, you also must forgive. Above all, here's the most important part of, the, of your ensemble. Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The title of the sermon this morning, Wrapped with Love. This text, I think, reminds us of who we are. It reminds us of who we're capable of being, of how we're called to live, reminding us what's possible because of Christmas. Above all else, love is the garment we will wear if our witness is faithful to the Christ whose birth we celebrate at Christmas. I would suggest to you, when we love with abandon, when we love selflessly and without condition, when we love with great risk, we bear witness to the love of God that came down at Christmas, the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ, the love of God incarnate in human flesh in the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, the love of God let loose upon the world through the Holy Spirit when The Spirit was poured out upon the church, the body of Christ, the Word continuing to be made flesh in the world today. So, let us celebrate Christmas in this holy season and in all the seasons yet to come. Let us don the true garments of our faith so that Christ may be revealed in us. Let us be little Bethlehems where Christ is born. Come on down, Brooks. You're good, man. Let us be little Christ so that the world may come to know him, to worship, to honor, and adore him, so that in all that we do, we may bring glory and honor to God. And so, beloved, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as our band leads us in Amazing Grace.
here today let's remember the birth of Christ we should celebrate it every single day and as Randy closed out his his presentation this morning the only thing I can say is what the verse that uh, the last verse of uh, 17 Colossians 3 17 is whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him so let's take it to the house I mean the barn. Fly away. <laughs> When 